Good day, everyone. This is Ray Lambert here, a.k.a. Sergeant Basson. Um, this is a continuation of the installation of a 20-degree wedge mount bracket or what have you. That's going to be going in between my helm that I put in from uh, Sea Star Solutions. Uh, as you all know, I put in the Sea Star steering system, hydraulic steering system, to replace my old wire cable steering system on bass boat, and it has worked phenomenal. I mean, the, the steering is great. It is, I mean, I just cannot give it enough of just how awesome that that system really is. Um, and if you're curious about how I'm installing it or what have you, or how to bleed it and everything like that, I, I did a, a video on it before. So if you would like to look at it, it falls under uh, Sergeant Basson or, um, or Ray Lambert. Look me up on YouTube. It's there. I'm also going to link it with this here video. Um, but today we're going to be talking about putting in this 20 degree uh mounting uh, wedge and basically it's going to look like this as you can see it has a 20 degree pitch to it all right and it's going to go behind the helm that fits on the hydraulic steering system for my steering wheel because i know some of y'all have learned uh, possibly the hard way or the easy way or some of you know unfortunately for me um i'm still learning about the steering systems and stuff like that and i'm teaching myself and i'm doing these videos so i can show people that you don't need to go to professionals or what have you like that. A little bit of common sense and uh, trial and error um, and a little bit of bravery. <laughs> uh, you can put these systems in because they do make these systems to be extremely, uh, uh, they are user friendly. Um, you just go by the directions and do some uh, videos, look online and see what other people's done. And if you have any questions, you can also call the manufacturers because they have been great as far as working with me, talking with me. And if I had any questions like that, they're around the spot for me or email me right back. Um, so that I got, I, I'm pretty awesome that they were able to do that. Um, but they are fairly easy to put in um, as long as you take your time and you just do it. We we'll do what the directions say to do. Um, but uh, we're going to be putting this in because... Uh, as you know, I'm pretty tall, you can see, <laughs> and I know there's some people out there that have long legs or what have you, I'm six foot two, um, so nothing worse than getting in your boat, having your steering system, and your knees are like this right here, and you're hitting it, and you're going to turn, all you're doing is hitting your knees, so I'm pretty sure we've all been there before in that, and some of us have, and it kind of sucks, <laughs> so what I've decided to do, uh, Sea Star, what have you, they've made these 20 degree pitches, you can go up even higher or lower, um, and what I got was 20 degrees, because that's what uh, was on the boat originally when I took off the other mounts that wouldn't work. It wasn't universal. So I'm going to put this in. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm bringing my steering wheel from here, just like tilt control would have you in the vehicle. My steering wheel is going to come up. And by doing that, now I'm, I can turn it full range of motion, and then I can use my tilt switch like that and everything I got. And I also installed on my, um, for a blinker switch, what have you, uh, to use control my tilt for my motor. Um, but it's going to be nice to sit there and be able to turn like this right here without having to hit my knees and it kind of interfering me a little bit because nothing trying to react real fast when you got a stomp, log, or tree, or God forbid, another boater, jet skiers, or what have you. <laughs> you know about that, up fast fisherman. Uh, you know, trying to dodge them going around a curve and all you can do is hit your leg and you got to let go of your steering wheel. So we're going to fix that today and I'm going to walk you through how to do all that and um, from a layman's terms. <laughs> And I uh, hope it helps you out. And all right, sorry about that uh, little bit of shut off there for a second. <laughs> Technical difficulties, but uh, that they can't work through, right? All right, so like I was saying, um, on layman's terms, we're going to sit down here and we're going to uh, uh, I'm going to talk you through it, and uh, hopefully it'll be a little bit easier for you and for us trying to do this together. Again, we're going to be doing it at the same time together, the first time. I've never done this before, so you know if I can do it, pretty much anybody better do it, right? All right. All right, see you in a bit. All right, here we are. A couple of things uh, we're gonna probably need for this uh, installation here. Is this your basic tools? You know, um, you're gonna have all your combination wrench sets, just the basic combination wrench sets uh, I'm gonna have here. Uh, you're gonna get you some gloves because this is gonna be a messy job. Now, you definitely need some paper towels. You know, uh, I use pretty much, you know, just uh, Green Marine or any type, any type of, uh, you know, your marine hydraulic fluid. I like to use biogradable stuff if I can help it. It's better for an environment. 
Lord forbid there's ever a leak or something like that, you know, um, I'm not sitting here messing up my fish or anything like that in the water, or, you know, I'm not, it's, it's a little bit biodegradable, so it's a little bit better for the, uh, for the planet. And I'm all about that, right? That's bass fish for me. We always got to make sure our next generation is coming, right? Um, you will have your jar, a clean jar. Now, I use the mason jars, whatever I can find. Anytime you have anything in your storage, take it and clean them up. In your shop, you definitely need them. Uh, that's when you had a good clear uh, hose to put on there for your bleeding later on. When your hydraulics, because we are opening back up the hydraulics to uh, put this mount on. Uh, you drill, uh, drill bits, what have you. Um, different knickknacks as far as the types of uh, heads and stuff like that we might need. Uh, some good tape and uh, of course your kit and your bleeder kit or what have you for when you go to um, put in your hydraulic fluid here a little bit. And again, I know a plastic container I used. Um, cleaned out, not the water one, that's my water bottle. Uh, but just a good plastic container like that. Now, good prep. Uh, it's good, really good idea to have. As everybody here knows, you know, brake fluid, hydraulic fluid, away like that can do a devastation to your carpet. Because it will eat it up, it will take the paint from the bottom of it, you start getting bubbling stuff down in your paint. Well, I like to take care of my boat, right? Okay, so I like to take an extra couple steps. If you take the time, it takes a few minutes to do, but it. it if you take these extra steps, it would save you a world of trouble in the future replacing the whole entire carpet. All right. So all I did was I just take a basic trash bag. I put it down. I put some painter's tape so it doesn't stick to my carpet too uh, too bad. And I put it up. Don't use duct tape. I do not recommend that because anybody who's ever put duct tape down, it pretty much sticks to <laughs> anything. And if you leave it there by accident, God forbid some of the uh, fluid gets on it, it can glue it down to your carpet. And that's about as bad as having to pull up your carpet. All right, and that works trying to fish in the boat barefooted. Lord be if you do and you're stepping in up sticky duct tape. <laughs> All right, I don't recommend fishing in the boat barefooted because you know you can't get a hook in your foot. All right, anyway, um, I also go to the extra step. I take a cardboard box, just a basic cardboard box I tore down and I'll put it under here. All right, that does two things. It works as a paper barrier, so that way if the if your hydraulic fluid flip drips down, which we will have some probably dripping now, uh, it'll catch it and absorb a lot of it. And that way, uh, you know, it's just an extra precaution. Not to mention, it works pretty good on my elbows and my back and knees and stuff like that, or what have you, if I'm underneath there. Anytime I'm doing stuff, it works as an extra piece of cushion for me. Um, again, I think that is just some of the basic stuff that we will be needing. And like I said, what I purchased, as you can see here, it's just a 20 degree solid aluminum, I believe it is, if I'm not mistaken, um, wedge kit. It comes with everything I need. All right, this can go under. It, you can drill out the hole big enough to stick this actually into your dashboard if you want to give you a sunk-in uh, steering system. Or what I'm going, what we're going to be doing today, we're going to be mounting this on the outside. All right, so it's gonna be the outside of my steering system because I want my steering wheel to be a little bit closer to me and up. If you mount it in, it's gonna sink it in and up, okay? So if you need to put your steering wheel in farther than your dash, you can do it, reverse it. If you want it on the outside, you can do it. By doing this on the outside though, it keeps me from having to drill a whole bigger hole to stick this inside my mount, inside my dashboard. And I don't know about y'all, but I don't, the more you drill that hole out, the you know, once you drill the hole out, you can't, nothing you can really do about it. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm putting this on the outside of my, my dash, and I'll show you here in a little bit. All right, it's gonna be like this right here on the outside of my dash, and it's gonna bring my steering wheel, as you can see, that 20 degrees tilt to it. And it makes it a whole lot easier. All I'm doing is I'm gonna drill my four holes, everything mounts right back inside here, and then mount that up there and we'll be done. Okay, it comes with all your screws and bolts, everything you need, long screws or what have you here. All comes everything you need on it. All right, and it's fairly cheap. They're really not that expensive, and they're good products. All right, we'll move on over here to the next step. All right, again, here's what we have now. Like I said, here's your steering system like that. Here's your helm and stuff, all right? And it just comes straight out right here. It just comes straight out on my, uh, my dashboard. What I'm gonna be doing, like I said, I'm putting this plate in, all right? This plate here is gonna be going in pretty much like so, okay? And it's gonna be bringing up that extra tilt right there is gonna be bringing my steering wheel up, okay? Sorry. Right. It's gonna mount back here underneath where this is at. It's gonna mount behind it. So I'm speak like this right here, it's gonna mount behind it. It's gonna bring up that extra steering wheel a whole lot more than where it's at sitting now. Now, like I said, 
you can, it's going to bring it out some. Now, like I said, you can also turn around. And you can mount these inside flat, just like this. And it's going to flat, it'll be right up against the side, it'll go right up in. And then that way it sinks your steering wheel in some more. Okay, I want my steering wheel out some more because when I sit, I like my steering wheel to be a little bit closer to me. Okay? So, we're going to get that taken care of here in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and get the steering column taken off for in a minute. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do that underneath. And just be careful doing it. All right. Also, again, you're going to make sure you want your good light underneath there and uh, use your light and stuff. Um, so it helps you light up underneath the bottom like that really well. So if you're sitting there trying to fight the wires and stuff like that. And we get underneath there, I'm going to explain stuff to you that uh, also can, might help you out a little bit too. Um, stuff I've learned just by working underneath the dash and stuff. All right. Okay, okay. Here we are underneath my boat right now. I've cleared off most of the wires and stuff like that. Move those back. And here are my uh, hydraulic glue hoses coming into the back of my steering column. Okay. Here's my hydraulic hoses right here coming in. All right. Now I'm going to be taking those off here in a minute. And when they do, they're going to drip. And when they do, you just want to try to catch them with a paper towel, what have you. And then I'm going to take some of my little tape I got, uh, painter's tape, put around the edges, ends of them. So that way I'm trying to keep any type of debris and stuff like that from falling inside of it. Okay, now you're taking these off and putting them back on, make sure you don't over torque them like that. So these are brass tips and you can over torque it. Now, another thing to keep in consideration while you're underneath this console. As anybody knows you have the fast boat, especially inside of a shed or working inside around, you do get gas smells and stuff like that that can travel up fumes or what have you. And while you're at this console and stuff like that, I highly recommend having some type of fan or something to try to get you some air underneath here uh, to keep fresh air circulating through here. Because if not, you can get lightheaded, dizzy, and I've known some of the guys even pass out. So, you know, you got to think safety first. Uh, when you work in with boats, electronics, anything like that, always think safety first. And I'm all about my fans out there, and I don't want nobody getting hurt, anybody passing out or anything like that. So, please, by all means, you know, um, my number one thing is taking care of y'all. So, uh, please make sure you got some type of airflow or something underneath here. And if you don't, you start feeling lightheaded or what have you, take a break. Get out from underneath here, get some fresh air, and then come back in and what have you. All right. Um, also, recommend wearing some uh, glasses while you're in here because you don't want to stop tripping in your face or anything like that. All right. Okay. Uh, let me take these off. And when I do, like I said, I'm going to drip a little bit, but I'm going to catch them and catch the drip. And take these off, put some tape around the ends of them. And that way, nothing can get inside because you don't want no debris in there. And then uh, once I get these off, then um, I'll go ahead and take off my helm, pull this helm mount off. And then uh, I'll get back on video here and continue recording. All right. All right, here we go. I got the helm off and the steering wheel and all that stuff off with it. Everything's down here all covered up, you know, because you want to make sure everything's all covered up. And a little bit of leakage is like that, drip down rather. I just call it paper towel and stuff and picked it all up. Make sure all this is covered up though, okay? Because you don't want anything. I just took a plastic bag, wrapped around all my ends and stuff because you don't want anything when i do my drill is here in a few minutes my drilling and stuff or if some of you might even have to cut the hole out bigger i might have to do a little bit of that um that also would depend on your boat and each individual some already have bigger holes some don't so if you have to sit here and do that to get it to mount like i said if you're going to stick it in as you can see the hole is way bigger than what the, i had originally there so but i'm not sticking it in i'm going to be mounting on the outside okay so again i've already got my mo my holes marked Okay, I marked all my holes with a current marker. All right, and again, it's gonna be just basically fitting on here like this. All right, that's the way it's gonna mount. As you can see, on my steering column, I'll have to bring it up, bring the steering up at an angle. Okay, I've already got my holes pre-marked. Now it does come with the template. If you choose so to use a template to do your drilling if you have to, on a larger, you know, a larger hole. Here's a template like that you can use. But I just, since I already have my two guides right here, these two are pretty much even. Right now, the winter manufacturer made this. They made them really good. So I just went right off that and brought it down evenly between the two. As you can see, it made it very simple for me to do because I was able to make, just bring, bring them right down evenly. So I was able to do that. So knocked out a little bit of time. But by me, take your time. Now, as with anything, when you're drilling this, again, put your hand back here. If you can touch anything that's gonna be a problem, 
Okay, when you drill, you make sure you don't drill into your wire systems like that or anything that's important. And also you wanna make sure behind this, because this is a layer of plastic here, all right, it's a shielding. Make sure behind this that you, one thing, you have a solid enough base to mount this on. And number two, make sure like mine stops, I could put a finger in here, my boards actually stop about this high up. All right, but if you think about it, it looks like you got this much room. Well, you don't. When you put that mount in there, if you ain't got enough boarding back here or fiberglass, when you drill that hole, you're not gonna be mounting into anything. And that's the last thing you want is your steering wheel start flapping or breaking off on you. So that's just small stuff like that that can be a huge issue for you in the future, okay, when you mount this without taking the time to check behind this. But always, always, I cannot stress enough, check behind the console at all times. Make sure behind this console that you ain't got nothing back there you're gonna hit. Again, cover up everything. I kind of cheat a little bit. I got myself a shot back, all right? And most bass fishermen and fishermen have these for the boat stuff. I'm gonna be running that while I'm sitting here vacuuming or vacuum up all the dust like that as I sit here and drill, okay? All right, um, again, I, I recommend getting a nice good uh, drill set, a kit or what have you, that yeah, it works really well. Um, and uh, this is gonna call for a 5 16th drill bit. Okay, and I got my impact drill, and I'm gonna go ahead and drill these holes. Now, you suppose you can't. You supposed to go out of an angle with them when you drill in. Um, I don't mind it so much. I'll go straight in, and I'll kind of bore it out just a little bit to give me a little bit of play, so that way I'm not just completely snug in there trying to put in. Now, most likely, I'm gonna have to come back with a saw saw or something, and I'm gonna have to drill this hole out a little bit bigger because you got your hydraulic cables coming in. They're pretty stiff. In the back of your steering column, you got your two prongs that come in that your hydraulics cable plug into. All right, mine is not going to be long enough for this here when I met when I mount that block on there. So that's something you got to keep in mind. So you are going to have to drill this out larger to get my hydraulic cables at an angle so I can hook onto the uh, back of the um, the helm steering column and stuff. Okay, so keep that in mind. Again, when you put that, if you mount it on top instead of sinking it, recess it in. You're gonna to have to drill out some more to get those stiff uh, hydraulic cables because they don't bend easy. You gotta, so you gotta have better get drill this out some more so you can bring them at an angle and hook it up to the back of your steering column, okay? So keep that in mind. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get this all squared away, pre-drill my holes, make sure nothing's behind it. Vacuum it as I go to help a little bit with the, uh, the dust like that, wear a face mask, what have you, because you are doing fiberglass. Um, and make sure you got your glasses on. But I'm gonna drill these out. And if I have to go ahead and cut this out, I'll go ahead and cut this out, and then um, I'll continue when we get to that next part. Okay. All right, here we have the mount. Temporary stuck in there right now. I'm making sure that uh, how much I'm gonna have to cut out. I got my screws in. There, it looks out pretty nice too. I like that black coater coating. So it mounts in there pretty good in that. I want to make sure my now. Keep in mind the screws that come with this kit. Okay, they're only about yay long. So, well, depends on which ones you order. But um, lucky for me, my washer's like that there to fit behind this because they've got to go all the way through all this, all the way through this thickness and go through. Some people's dashes are a little bit thicker, some are thinner. The ones that's thicker, the screws that came with the basic kit, you're going to have to uh, uh, add on longer screws or bolts or what have you um, to fit, okay? Because like I said, these fit just perfect through. I got just enough on the back side, about that much to put the washer and the nut on and it catches good and it's gonna hold up pretty well. I got lucky on this one. So for keep that in mind now, cause you might need to get a little bit longer uh, bolts or what have you when you go to put these on, okay, in the future. So keep that in mind is when you do it. Um, but again, it all leveled up pretty good. Looks pretty nice in here. I just gotta tighten it down. But now what I did now is I took, uh, put it on. I took my permanent marker and basically I ran it right inside here and I ran around and mark what I need to cut off. So when I take this off here in a minute, I'll see what I need to cut out, how much more you cut out to get my hoses in there really well and stuff. So keep in mind though, on the back of your helm, you, your your original screws that come on your helm is about that long, okay? So when you put them in here, they're gonna hit the back of this thing here. So that's why I'm gonna have to cut it out too as well so I can stick them back in really well and it's all gonna be looking good. All right, so again, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this back off here, and then I'm going to go ahead and cut out all this here we got with a sawzall or a little jigsaw, what have you, um, and cut it all out. And then uh, we'll put this back on and be ready to go ahead and mount the um, the helm back on. All the helm's going to do is once I put this back up, the helm fits right on top of this, and it's going to fit the screws on. It's going to line up here. It fits right in. It's all custom made for it. And then I'm going to hook all my stuff up to the back of it. 
and uh, we'll go from there. And uh, she looks really nice, nice and sturdy on there. All my bolt soy stats been screwed down really well. You don't want to over tight it, okay? And it gave me a whole lot more room. Now I still got, a, I got almost a hand worth here now. Before I was up to here, or even hitting my thing. Put a nice little till on it, and you can see it. So now when I'm driving, I can back here, and I'm good to go. I got my legs here now. And they got plenty of room down here to go now. Tilling, I like that tilt. So, um, keep in mind now when you go to mount, when you before you take off everything, I meant to tell y'all earlier this uh, little helper here. In the back side of it, when you go to disconnect your hydraulic tubes, your hoses, make sure you mark your hose left and right. Okay, so when you put this back up, <laughs> you're not sitting there trying to figure out which goes back into the back of the solenoid here. Is your left or your right? So that way, you, if you go ahead and you pre-mark those before you take off all that hydraulics like that, that will save you a tremendous amount of time or trouble later. Now, if you actually didn't do that, go ahead and connect your hoses and then just turn your steering wheel to the left, look for your motor to move to the left, turn it to the right, if it turns to the right. If it turns opposite, then just flip your hoses. All right, that's an easy fix for that. So what I'm gonna do now, is I'm getting ready to open up my reservoir, because right now I can turn my steering wheel. If you hear that, it's got a lot of bubbling and air in it. Okay, and the steering's not turning at all, because when we opened it up, we got air inside. So we're gonna easily fix that. I'm gonna disconnect this right here. I'm gonna run my clear tube to it. I'm gonna hook up my uh, hydraulic fluid tube up here. I'm gonna have it hanging like top top. It's gonna choose when we coming down. I'm just gonna let gravity turn it. And then I'm going to go to the back and motor here and I'm going to um, show you all how to bleed this thing, make it a whole lot easier for you and bleed it. We're having to really worry about too much to worry about. All right. All right. Here we are here with uh, Tracy, my fishing partner. <laughs> so she's uh, helping me here. We're going to bleed the air out of the hydraulic steering line. And by doing so, like I was saying earlier, we got our plastic hose here, clear plastic hose attached to our hydraulic fluid. It's gonna run down and we got it plugged into the top of our steering column here on the helm. All right, now what we're gonna do is we, I mean, in a minute, I'm gonna go in the back back here and I'm gonna loosen up the stuff I'm about to show you. Now to loosen that up, I'm gonna have her turn the steering wheel left or right. I'm gonna have her turn it right first. And then as she turns it, um, What's gonna happen, this fluid is gonna be forced down through here. It's gonna force all the air out. And then the back back here, you have your little, I call them drain plugs or bleeder plugs, what have you. It's sitting on the side here. Now I've already got my little contraption hooked up. I just took a clear basket hose and I hooked it up here. So on each side, you're gonna have one on the left and right side of your steering. A dark steering solenoid here. Okay, you got one here. You got it over here. Now, at the moment of time, it looks like a little black piece sticking like that. I just took it off so it's protected. All right, you unhook it. You're gonna have a little hole in it. You put this uh, plastic tube over it. Now, all you're gonna do is you come here with your wrench and you're gonna loosen this up just a little bit, enough to get the air out of it. That's all you wanna do, because what you, as soon as you loosen up and you start turning, it gets hard and the, steering, the motor's gonna turn. Now, all you're gonna do then is you're gonna tighten it back up. Now, I'm just gonna loosen a little bit. Okay, it's nice and loose. Now I'm gonna take my jug here and I'm gonna ask my partner what's gonna happen. She's gonna go up there and she's gonna turn the steering. And what's gonna happen, you're gonna see fluid, it's gonna come through here. It's gonna come bring a bunch of air bubbles and all through. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep turning that until the air bubbles stop. All right, go ahead, uh, turn it to the, let's see here. Try to turn it to the right first. Okay, see my fluid coming through here? She's gonna keep turning. All right, go ahead and keep turning as tight as it goes. It's tight. All right, now turn to the left. Okay, see the fluid coming in? Okay, now she's turning that. She's gonna keep turning. What's happening now is I'm looking for any type of air bubbles. So as she keeps turning, I'm gonna keep looking for any type of air bubbles coming through my line. This is gonna keep going until it fills up. And I'm gonna show you a little trick that I do. What I do, she's gonna keep going. 
Right, see the air bubbles coming out? Here we go. That's what we want right there. All right, partner, hold on one second for me. All right, so I got to have both hands here. So what's going to happen, like I said, you'll do that on both sides. You're going to fill it up into your little clear valve here, glass jar, whatever, clean glass jar. Make sure it's clean, okay? And you're going to keep doing that until all the air comes out of this line. When the air comes out of this line, you're going to tighten up your little plug right here. Once you tighten that back up, then you're gonna do the same exact thing on the other side. You're gonna let the fluid run, you're gonna turn it all opposite direction. You're gonna keep turning it until no more air is in it. All right, once you've done that on both sides, then you've pretty much bled your line. Now what I do, instead of sitting here and having to go back and replace the whole entire bottle over there, I just take this nice clear fluid that I got, this clean, I cut the top of that bottle, right there from a partner, yep, there you go. I cut the top of it open, yep. And then I'll pour this back into it. All right, nice and easy so I can get a whole bunch of bubbles. I'll pour that back inside of it and then I'll have it sit there and keep going and then we'll re keep, get, keep that back up. That way I'm just recycling my fluid, making sure that I'm getting debris and something in my side of my fluid. Recycle it and that way you don't have to sit here and go through four or five bottles trying to get the air out of it. So that is my way of bleeding the lines and I hope that helps. And like I said, you know we'll uh, finish doing this right here and then once I get it all done then uh, we'll show you the last uh, final product and be done with it. Oh, one more thing my partner wants to say. Go ahead. It's important that whoever's at the front keeps this held up straight so the line is not getting bubbles in it because you don't want to be sending any air back into the part that you're trying to bleed out through the back. So you want to have them hold this up straight the whole time. Yep. Like I said earlier is that you by holding it up like that and keeping it held up in you letting gravity kind of do its own thing and like i said she did she was saying you don't want to turn it sideways like that and get any air inside because then you got to start all over again and you don't want this to run out either exactly <laughs> all right i'm gonna go ahead and keep that going and like i said we'll come back and um uh show you up the finished product like i said i hope you enjoy the video i hope it helps you some uh the stereo system like i said went in great um, key features here is, like I said, is just take your, take your time, slow down, and it's, it is easy to do these things, and we are capable of doing them without just through having the basic knowledge. You just got to slow down, take your time, when in doubt, you know, ask a friend, ask someone who knows, uh, search it online, or even call the manufacturers like that and ask them questions and stuff when you don't understand a product or if you gotta get stuck. Because, as anybody knows, and I'll put this out here, anytime you deal with any type of steering system like that, hydraulics like that, all that takes a little bit of air in that line and you are you're gonna lose control of your steering and that's the last thing I ever want anybody to do is have an accident on the water or what have you for not doing the proper thing. So if you don't know, again, take your time, ask questions, and if you don't, worst scenario, if you don't know it, then go ahead and have a professional do it. That's why they're professionals for. Um, but steering come out perfect. Uh, yeah, I believe the system like that came out great. I hope that little bit of video helped you out there. I know it wasn't in depth like I would really like, um, but you know, I'm still learning myself. Um, but I bled it a couple times already when I put the system in and then when I changed the fluid out a while back and then also when I just did this, it works every single time. Like I said, just make sure you get your clear hoses like that. Keep going nice and slow. Don't let any air in there as you're putting more fluid in it. Bleed that line. I got 20 foot of line inside this boat and it wrapped up. It came with the system. It takes a little bit to bleed it all out, but once it does, it works out great. Um, I like the first thing also, just uh, thank the good Lord uh, for the blessings I have to be able to do this type of stuff and to be able to afford it and stuff. Um, I like to uh, thank my sponsors, Favorite Fishing uh, USA, Favorite Fishing Rods, and uh, they're great sponsors like that. They help me out a lot, and they have great fishing gear, uh, great uh, fishing rods, anything you need fishing, they got it. So by all means, please check them out. Um, and uh, again, just uh, thank you for watching my video. I hope it helps. Please leave comments. If you have any questions, please send them my way. I'd be more than happy to ask them for answer for answer them for you. Um, anything, just send it my way. And again, like it if you like it. Um, and uh, I hope this helped you out. Again, uh, this is uh, Ray Lambert, 
uh, aka Sergeant Bassin. Look me up online. I got a couple other videos for you too. All right, y'all have a good day and God bless.